we're not questioning your personal conduct. We're questioning in your official capacity going and undermining the chain of command, which is obviously what you did. You, you've created this whole chain did not of undermine the chain narrative. of command in, in yeah, the manner did. they performed. Yeah, you did. You absolutely Congress. did. And it, did not. Well, you know what? You said yesterday that you weren't going to resign when senators asked you this question. And I believe that you guys probably won't resign. You seem to be very happy failing up over there. Left. Is it, we're supposed to believe that the president was either not informed by you of these very important factors or he forgot it. Either one is alarming. Chairman's time. And they're not going to defeat the government of Afghanistan militarily. You really blew that call, didn't you, General? I believe that that was a issue of strategic stalemate and that if we had remained in Afghanistan uh, with the advisory levels of effort than the government of Afghanistan. Well, that's, that's an interesting Afghan answer to a question. Forces. It's just not one I asked. You spent more time with Bob Woodward on this book than you spent analyzing the very likely prospect that the Afghanistan government was going to fall immediately to the Taliban, didn't you? Not even close, Congressman. Oh, really? Because you said right after Kabul fell that no one could have anticipated the immediate fall of the Ghani government. When did you become aware that Joe Biden tried to get Ghani to lie about the conditions in Afghanistan? He did that in July. Did you know that right away? I'm not aware of what President Biden You're not aware of the phone call that Biden had with Ghani where he said, whether it is true or not, we want you to go out there and paint a rosy picture of what's going on in Afghanistan. You're the chief military advisor to the president. You said that the Taliban was not going to defeat the government of Afghanistan militarily, which, by the way, they cut through him like a hot knife through butter. And then the president tries to get Ghani to lie. When did you become aware of that attempt? Well, there's two things there, Congressman, if, if I may. One is what I said was the situation was stalemate. And if we kept advisors with there, the government of Afghanistan and the army would have still been there. That's what I said. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But well, it seems wrong now. With well, the we withdrew all the, we withdrew Secretary all the advice. Austin. Secretary Austin, are you capable of assessing whether another has the will to fight? No, we're not. And uh, that's the point that the chairman made earlier. So. That's just like an incredibly disappointing thing for the Secretary of Defense to simply say, I can't assess whether someone has the will to fight, but it is consistent with your record. I mean, during the Obama administration, I think they gave you about $48 million to go train up some folks in Syria to go take on the Assad government. And I think your testimony was that only four or five survived first contact with the enemy. So what confidence should this committee have in you or should the country have in you when you've now confessed to us and whether it's the swing and a miss in Afghanistan that General Milley talked to the Senate about yesterday, total failure, or whether it was your failures in Syria, you don't seem capable to look at a fighting force and determine whether or not they have the will. Well, Is recall, that an embarrassing? You recall, Congressman, that uh, the end result was a, a, uh, uh, the SDF that we stood up that was very, very instrumental in turning the, the, the tide of, uh, of, of battle up in Syria. Oh, yeah. T tur turned it so much, you've got Assad in power in Syria, you've got the Taliban in power in Afghanistan. I mean. Where have you been? The focus was the focus was ISIS, Congressman, and we and, and those forces uh, had significant uh, effect on on the well, ISIS it, network. It just seems like you're chronically bad at this, and you have admitted that, I guess, which is to your credit. But you know, when when people in the military, like Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, stand up and demand accountability. When they say that you all screwed up, when they point out that General Milley's statement that the, Tal you know, that, that the government of Afghanistan is not going to get defeated by the Taliban, well, he ends up in the brig. And you all end up in front of us, and your former employer, Raytheon, ends up with a lot of money, and we have poured cash and blood and credibility into a Ghani government that was a mirage. It fell immediately. And while the guy sitting next to you was off you know, talking to Phil Rucker and was off doing his thing with Bob Woodward, we were buying into the big lie, the big lie that this, that this was ever going to be successful and that we could ever rely on the Afghanistan government for anything at all. You know, General Milley, you kind of gave up the game earlier when you said you wanted to address elements of your personal conduct that were in question. We're not questioning your personal conduct. We're questioning in your official capacity going and undermining the chain of command, which is obviously what you did. You, you've created this whole chain of Did not undermine the chain narrative. of command in, in yeah, the manner did. they performed. You absolutely did. And it, did not. Well, you know what? 
You said yesterday that you weren't going to resign when senators asked you this question. And I believe that you guys probably won't resign. You seem to be very happy failing up over there. But if we didn't have a president that was so addled, you all would be fired because that is what you deserve. You have let down the people who wear the uniform in my district and all around this country, and you're far more interested in what your perception is and how people think about you in insider Washington books than you care about winning, Gentleman's which this time group has is incapable expired. of doing. And Ms. Houlihan is recognized. Objection, so ordered. You, so Stephanopoulos asked this, quote, but your military advisors warned against withdrawing on this timeline. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. Biden, no, they didn't. It was split. That, that wasn't true. That wasn't true. Stephanopoulos, they didn't tell you that they wanted troops to stay? Biden, no, not, at, not in terms of whether we were going to get out in a time frame all troops. They didn't argue against that. Stephanopoulos, so no one told, your military advisors did not tell you, quote, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. Question, Biden, no. No one said that to me that I can recall. So gentlemen, with all due respect, the American people deserve to know the truth in all this. They're asking us to get the truth. So here, here's the thing, there's only three possibilities here. Either the president lied to the American people, or he legitimately cannot remember the counsel of his top military advisors in winding down the longest war in American history, or you have not been fully accurate under oath. General McKenzie, I'll ask you, which is it? I'm going to be very direct. I cannot share advice I give the president, and I will not do that. I will also tell you, though, that it's been my consistent position throughout this hearing and the hearing yesterday that I believe the appropriate level of our forces in Afghanistan should have been 2,500. I, th I think we can uh, take that to mean that you gave him that advice. Let so me I, ask so I would not take it to mean anything other than the words. Fair I enough. Said, Secretary Austin, what, what, what is it? What are, we, what are we to believe by seeing all this? Well, first of all, you heard me say earlier, uh, Congressman, that I support the president's decision. You also heard me say that, that I don't view this choice as a no-cost, no-risk choice. I do believe that if we, that if we left 2,500 uh, people there for a, a long, an extended period of time, you'd eventually have to reinforce those people because the Taliban was, gonna, uh, was committed to, uh, to attacking us. Mr. Secretary, I understand all that. What we're trying to get to is what did the president know? Did he forget what was told to him, or is he not being truthful? Which I view is that as an inappropriate question, and I, I won't. Well, you may, but the American people don't. Okay. And the American people want and deserve accountability. And we even have service members like Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller being thrown in the brig for suggesting that. The public's faith in our institutions continues to erode precisely because everyone in the D.C. bubble appears to have some sort of immunity from the basic standards the rest of America is expected to live by. This is quite clearly one of the biggest military and foreign policy blunders since our withdrawal from Vietnam. So my question for all of you is very simple. Where does the blame lie? Mr. Austin, Secretary Austin. Well, first of all, I, you know, I am responsible for everything that happens that, that DOD does, and it does a lot. I remain focused on defending this country, and uh, that's, that's going to be my focus for the foreseeable future. Uh, secondly, you know, I would remind you that uh, we just evacuated 124,000 people. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that you think that that was a big success, evacuation. But the blame for the disastrous withdrawal that everyone agrees was a disaster, who's to blame for that? I'll let the silence speak for itself. General Milley, you said earlier this month that it's possible that we would work with the Taliban to conduct strikes against ISIS-K in Afghanistan, pre presumably referencing our over-the-horizon capabilities. But today you testified, you said, quote, the Taliban remains a terrorist organization with ties to al-Qaeda. So are you now suggesting that the United States form some sort of strategic partnership with a terrorist organization? No, absolutely not. I'm not suggesting that at all. Could I go to your first question, though? Please. Um, like Frank McKenzie, like General McKenzie, it, it's not our purview to share specific discussions with the president in terms of national security decision making. But it was our opinion at the time, um, and, and it's been very consistent. And I would also tell you that this administration did, and I was part of it, uh, along with the Joint Chiefs, a very rigorous process. Uh, and this president uh, was, was uh, one of the most informed decisions that you can imagine. Um, 
in terms of all sides of the argument. We in the military, in the uniformed military, we look at the cost, the risk to force, the benefit, et cetera, in a narrow, focused view. This other decision makers have a much wider angle. I appreciate that. But, but what we're left with in the nine seconds I have left is that we're supposed to believe that the President was either not informed by you of these very important factors or he forgot it. Either one is alarming. Chairman's time is expired. And